I was able to catch an interview today with uh, Deontay Wilder. Uh, before I get started, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a comment, Boxing Opinions 100. But uh, Deontay Wilder uh, said that him and Malik Scott, you know, formed a bond and, you know, they became good friends. And so he says that Malik Scott has the boxing genius inside of his mind, but he Malik Scott doesn't have the athletic body to do what his mind is telling him. Then Deontay Water goes on to say that he has the athletic body and his body can follow the instructions of Malik Scott, which is very true. That, that's very true in uh, every sport. Like some people, just like uh, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, some people can't do what they do, but their mind tells them that they can. But when they go out there, they seem to can't do, but then somehow in their mind, they're, I guess, challenging themselves. But uh, Wilder kind of seemed to uh, hit around about how Mark Breland kind of dismissed himself uh, by joining the other side, because at one point, he said that fairies, the fairy camp, Tyson fairy camp, said they tried uh, uh, to put some, uh, how did he call it, a juju mojo, like the gypsy, gypsy juice on him. And they said they still couldn't get him out of there uh, by putting this, uh, sounds like uh, some kind of curse or something that he's talking about that that they did something to him and, and uh, through his willpower, they, he, he, they still couldn't get him out of there. They said they, they had to use Mark Breland to help their side. So, so he was insinuating that uh, Mark Breland helped them by throwing a towel in because he says, he still speaks about this uh, the fighter has to be perfect for 12 round things and he only has to be perfect for two. But, uh, you know, that's the, that's what I think, what got us to this point for him thinking that, because what, what is going to happen when you meet a fighter, such as a Tyson Fury that you can't get out of there. So that uh, invalidates that statement right there. And then he says that right after the Tyson Fury fight, well, I assumed that he knew that he was going to get rid of Mark Breland. And he said he wanted to bring Malik Scott on earlier, but there were no vacancies like for an employee because he's such a loyal person. He says that once he's loyal to you, that you know he rides with you to the end which is a good thing, you know, I, I don't, I don't uh, doubt uh, nothing Brother Deontay says. Like I say all the time, I, I like Deontay. Well, I like the intimidation that he brings to the ring and then the, the uh, suspense of the knockout. Uh, I know I've seen other fighters, fighters have maybe better boxing skills than him, but that somehow when you figure out who you are, you figure out what works for you. So Deontay Wilder figured out that what works is to knock you out. I don't have to do all this other stuff. I don't have to go to your body and, and that. So he just did what works for him for as long as it works until it didn't work anymore. So that's how that kind of stuff goes like that. Then uh, the interview kind of turned to like uh, Deontay Wilder saying that he wished 
every fighter after each fight would uh, go have a, uh, it was an MRI MR done. And he said, this one didn't make sense to me. He, he, he brought up that he wished they would go have this done after each fight. And then he says that uh, uh, the MIR doesn't detect it. So that doesn't make sense right there. So he probably needs to sometimes go back and watch his own interviews. And when you give interviews, when you're talking live, sometimes you say things that you've seen where you made a mistake. So uh, I just think that he really didn't know what he was talking about. So then he says to do not come to this fight, the trilogy fight, if you don't have the stomach for it. He said, because what you're about to witness or uh, what he's going to do to theory, you know, he spoke of uh, this figure in him. He says that, you know, all this stuff he's carried around for the past 17 months that he's going to take out on him. And uh, the person that was interviewing him, uh, uh, Kind of like they talking to him about good things that he wanted to hear because they brought up the second uh, Burmester Verm fight as you know like uh, I would hate to see what you're gonna do to Tyson Fury because we seen what you did to Burmester Verm when you're angry and likewise with uh, Lewis King Kong Ortiz. So that's what the, well, the guy that was interviewing him says. That's why when I speak of uh, yes men, like everybody telling you the good things, uh, nobody's questioning you about, you know, the, the negative side. But you, it's his right to set it up that way. So I, I think he kind of feels like uh, when you're interviewing me, you, uh, I'm gonna talk to you if, uh, you uh, say these certain things, but if, if you know if it goes, the conversation goes south. That seems like that may terminate the the interview. So it's, uh, all the interviews I've seen lately, uh, the people talking seem to talk to him the way he wants to wants to be talked to, and uh, you know he he won't have it no other way. So if you want to do an interview with me, this is. Uh, the way you're going to do the interview. And when asked about after, if he, would, if he was successful in the Tyson Theory trilogy, is uh, Anthony Joshua next, AJ. And he kind of laughed it off, or, but didn't really answer the question. And he just said, you guys know what I want. So I, I thought that to me was avoiding the question or either he's just trying to focus his mind on Tyson Fury right now, which wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, I kind of look, try to figure out both ways of what a person is thinking instead of just criticizing them for what he said. You know, what if you meant it this way, but then you have to say, well, what if you meant it that way? So we're not inside of Deontay Wilder's mind, so nobody's uh, uh, can really tell the way he meant certain things. Then uh, Deontay Wilder said at one point that him and Malik Scott has built a whole facility, which I take uh, as a boxing training camp of some sort. But he said he's built this one facility uh, because of Tyson Fury, uh, of what he's going to do to Tyson Fury. He said he built this facility to commit a legal homicide. So he's insinuating that he's training to uh, do harm to Tyson Fury. Then he kind of kind of bashed Tyson Fury in a way that didn't really make sense. He was asking, uh, he said, Tyson Fury has a rap sheet for cheating, which I, I can't really recall any anything uh, other than what the allegations he brought against Tyson Fury. 
But he says, then he went on and says that I thought maybe he was saying what Tyson Fury had was a, a, a felony or something. Maybe he did some crimes or something that we all didn't know about. So I, that's, that's what I mean by how you got to uh, weigh both things the way they're said. Then he said, Tyson Fury is known for cheating. He's a drug addict. Then he said, he's he himself, Deontay Wilder, it has lived a, a kind of like a, a good life. Like he, he's never done drugs, which is good. But, you know, it's not a bad thing. And, you know, never, I guess, got any kind of trouble. So he, he, he compared that to how can you believe what Tyson Fury is saying and not believe what he's saying, which that part right there didn't make no sense to me. So then uh, uh, Wilder says that uh, when he arrives in Vegas, he said that's when the violence will start. You know, I guess he's saying whenever he touched down, you know, it, it, it's on the cracking. So he's, he's guaranteed. Um, he said this fight will end by a knockout, but he didn't say, when he said that, he didn't say by who. So it's like he kind of covering both ways. And he made a video the other day when Malik Scott was wrapping up his, his hands and he was dancing around playing a song, you know, which he has his own right to getting getting Wilder's move, you know. But I, you know, but I seems like to me that. He's just trying to show that he's okay. And, and then Wilder said at one point that if Tyson Fury's team and Tyson Fury wanted to get him and beat him, that they should, should have done it back in July. I guess he's talking about of 220 when it, whenever these dates were supposed to be uh, made, of July and October. He said now, he said he's a healthy, fully wilder. He said he's maybe in the best health uh, that he could be in because he's had to take off for 17 months. And, and, you know, he said he got everything fixed. I guess he was insinuating uh, with his bicep. And he said that he was walking around with a shoulder that had popped up and popped back in. But he said since he's prone to pain, so he said he didn't, he didn't uh, go see about it. So then uh, he criticized uh, his corner or people that know him. He said when he took his face mask off or not, he took it off when he named a guy's name. He said when he took his face mask off, he said they should have looked at him and known right away that something was wrong with him. And then he said the people up above, you know, I guess he's talking about the people in the upper decks in those uh, expensive seats, like watching. He said that they could see that something was wrong with him when they first uh, seen him. Then uh, it's almost as if he said, and then he went on about that, uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, he has this toughness built in him. He said he has tough skin. And he said that if he really wanted to quit, he said he could have did so in the first round. He said after, he said he could have went back to his corner and told his corner that something is wrong and quit. But he says that he's, you know, he comes from Alabama. He has tough skin. So he said he had to gut it out as a fighter. He said this was a time to... Uh, to not complain, not no, no. Otherwise, there's no quit in it. So, I would like to know about uh, what you think about these things that Deontay Wilder has said, and you know he's guaranteed to knock out. And Tyson Fury said he he's he's going underground, and when he comes back, he's going to smash Wilder's face in. This just seems like this is going to be a good one to me. This is this is one where. Ain't no cars gonna be in the street, you know. This is you can look at across the street at the at the parking lot. Ain't no cars over there. You can tell when a good fight is on. It's like when Canelo fight, there's light traffic. If you want to go somewhere, go somewhere when Canelo is fighting, because everybody's tuning in. So I think everybody's gonna be tuning in for this one.
because there's been a lot of hype about it. So let me know your thoughts and who you got. Are you, are you going with Wilder or you think Tyson Fury is going to do it again? So I just think uh, uh, all the things that's been said, so I just hope uh, Deontay Wilder can back him up because, you know, if, if uh, it goes in Tyson Fury's way, it depends on how the fight ends. But uh, if Tyson Fury stops him again, then I can't see him. I see Wilder going into hibernation, you know, maybe for years. He might not really have a fight again uh, then. So uh, just let me know your thoughts and hit that uh, comment button and, and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. This is Boxing Opinions 100, and I would like to know your opinion. So leave your thoughts.